second coming of Oleg Blochin or a ball-hogging maverick that will cause more problems than solutions. Just how good is Mikhailo Mudrik? Mudrik is a phenomenal goal for it. He's someone who's got a plus 60% shot accuracy rate, which is incredible when you think about it. Someone who is razor sharp with his finishing, got a composed mind in front of goal in this situation here. He's joining the game from quite deep. Does he go around the outside? No. Decides to sort of make the game more compact and stay inside. Spots a pass. Very inventive usage of the ball. Spots the space here in a congested penalty area. Little touch here. Great onto his left foot. No hesitation. Spots the corner and finishes it with a plum. This is a favoured move for Mudrik. Someone who loves to slalom in off the left. Very reminiscent of, say, Martinelli uh, for Arsenal. But this is the slight difference here. He's very, very confident on his weaker foot, almost to the point where there's zero hesitation when he has to go onto his weaker foot. But again, preferences to slalom in on his right where he can, where he's razor sharp with his finishing. This is quite speculative, but it's a rare misstep for Mudrik, someone who is incredibly accurate with his shooting, can shift either way. Reminds a bit of Mbappe, this. For a player as explosive as Mudrik, to have that level of successful dribble percentage is pretty phenomenal. I mean, Grealish is more of that hazard mould of dribbler where it's more about close control. It's more about protecting the ball, uh, using, you know, that laces part of the foot, little body feints and keeping possession. Whereas Mudrik is that more explosive style of dribbler like a Gareth Bale. So the fact that he's got a certain amount of precision in his play where he can generally get past players in very tight situations again and again, you know, that's phenomenal. And I think what Mudrik also has is he's got flair in his dribbling as well. He's someone who's got tricks. He can do little step overs to change directions and get shots off from difficult situations. So he's a very complete dribbling package. And because of his two footedness, he's someone who's not afraid to go in or out and defenders really can't grasp which way he's going to go. So it's more in his hands whether he's going to have a good day or a bad day. Very, very tricky customer. This little step over here to then go and get the cross in. I mean, how do you really mark a player like that 1v1? It reminds me a bit of Mbappe, who's also very, very difficult to defend in 1v1 situations. You almost have to go 2v1, but Mudrik's proven he can get past even two players at a time. Rather like Rashford, Mudrik is more of a match-winning type of winger, someone who wants to score goals, win games, be the face of those game-turning moments and his volume of passes suggests that he's not at the heart of the game in terms of building up the play but someone who more stays on the periphery waiting for his moment to really impact the final third and drive the team at the right moments and it's almost like keeping possession is an afterthought for a player like Mudrik because he's so intent on winning the game and taking risks that other players wouldn't it affects his overall passing percentage Having said that, there are some brain dead moments in possession where you'd expect him to make simple wall passes and he's unable to. So this is a part of his game where when he moves into a bigger team, you'd expect it to be coached out of him and for it to go over 80% in terms of accuracy. If you thought Mudrik was just a goal scoring threat, you thought wrong. He's also a chance creating machine. He's happy to suck players in just because of his sheer dribbling threat. He's happy to go down the line, put a cross in, hit slide passes across the box. But he's also happy to come inside, pick up pockets quite deep from the left half space and hit a range of threaded balls on the run. He does over hit passes a lot and that can be very frustrating. Definitely an area of his game which does still need fine tuning. But no one can question his vision, his creativity. You know, he's got little things like scoop passes outside of the foot passes. There's a lot of range in his passing technique. It's important that tactically he has players who overlap on the left because that will allow him to enjoy his creative part of him as well. He's an explosive wing forward who can also create, so that's a very complete scary combination. Crossing forms an important part of Mudrik's creative arsenal. And because of his sheer goal threat, defenders tend to want to protect their penalty area and show him around the outside or just push him towards the flank. But because he's someone who's so two-footed, 
you know, he likes having that time and space to pick out players inside the box. And, you know, anything over 30% in terms of cross success rate is pretty admirable. And so he's a solid crosser. He's someone who has quite a good weak foot in terms of his crossing. He's not afraid to sort of shimmy, go down the line, put a cross in with his weak foot as well, but definitely better when he checks in onto his right. And then he's so good at just picking out players in the box once he's made that check. Modric's long passing is a cause for concern because he doesn't really have a grasp of what technique to use at the right time when he's trying to switch the play. Now he's someone who, because he's so used to slaloming off the left flank and curling the ball into the opposite corner when he's taking a shot or when he's crossing the ball, crossing using the instep and whipping it in, He's trying to use that technique for his long passing as well. And what that does is, if you look at this clip here, he uses the instep instead of outward swerving. And that goes straight to the opposition fullback. And even when he's trying to loft the ball like this, he constantly overhits it. Hence why his accuracy rate is so low. This is better, you know, getting underneath the ball, nice flat trajectory, almost a bit of outside swerve so that if you do slightly mishit it, the opposition needs to try and read the ball in flight and get to it. So definitely overall needs a lot of work on his technique for the long pass. In terms of Mudrik's heading, I think, you know, statistically, there's not much to say in terms of his aerial threat on goal. But from open play, you know, anything over 40% is very impressive, especially for a winger. And the eye test supports that. You know, if you're watching Mudrik compete in these sort of 50-50 aerial situations or from goal kicks. He's someone who's very competitive, doesn't seem fearful at all, happy to throw his body into it. So I think he'll have no problem dealing with the physicality of the Premier League. He looks like someone who's willing to battle a good leap on him as well. He's quick, so he's able to leverage that pace when he's running in for a challenge and that is off-putting. And he's got a bit of an intimidation factor as well for someone who's a wing type player. So that will all put him in good stead for these aerial battles, especially in the Premier League. <laughs> Defensively, Mudrik's stats are solid. Um, I wouldn't say they're outstanding by any means, but what we're looking at here is a player who's incredibly quick, has an intimidation factor, but he's also the star of Shakhtar. And that's worth noting because, you know, generally that type of player isn't going to be putting in as much defensive numbers as his teammates. So trying to extrapolate that and predict what it would be like in an Arsenal shirt is difficult. But what I would say is that on paper, he seems to have all the attributes you'd want in a modern sort of wing forward who can press from the front. He's quick, he's intelligent, he's aggressive. So definitely a lot to work with there from a defensive perspective. Tactically, Shakhtar use a 4-1-4-1 and Mudrik is the sole cornerstone of that front line because they rotate their strikers, they rotate their right winger. The other player to watch out for though is Mikhailichenko, the left back. He plays a key role in having that intuitive understanding of what Mudrik needs. Does Mudrik need to be left alone or does he need support on the overlap? And that's an important facet because Mudrik is someone who needs that space down the line to just run past players and go onto his left foot as well as that ability to slalom inside. He's a two-way threat. And if he constantly had a left-back overlapping him, that would make him more predictable because then players would know he's constantly coming inside. Now, moving on to his move to Arsenal. I think it's a seamless tactical fit if we move the Martinelli debate to the side for a while. Zinchenko could easily replicate what his left-back does for him at Shakhtar. He's someone who has the presence of mind of knowing when to overlap and to drop a bit deeper, that's fine. Jacker is someone who can time his move out to the left when Mudrik comes inside. So in terms of the fluidity, there shouldn't be a problem. Chemistry-wise, should be a good fit. Jesus likes to drop deep and Mudrik can go in and be that sort of match-winning goal scorer. Again, all of that seems to make sense. So there shouldn't be any problems physically as well. Players from the Ukrainian league like Fernandinho, Willian, they've generally adapted quite well to the Premier League. So there shouldn't be any issues on that front. But the elephant in the room is Martinelli. Will Martinelli be able to adapt to having Mudrik in the side? Will he become the team centre forward or vice versa? I foresee issues on that front. I don't think both players will be able to operate together. I think if you're going to force it, I'd probably have Mudrik 
as the central player if Jesus is out, if Enketi is out, because I think Mudrik's a superior goal threat, someone who can, you know, if he's in a central region, he's going to be able to thread balls through, he's going to be creative. In conclusion, I think Mudrik is someone who can be generational. He's got the goal threat, he's got the explosivity, he's got the close control, he's got the creativity, he's got so many weapons to his game. And I think he will adapt well to the Premier League. Can he be as good as blocking? You know, that all depends on whether he fine tunes his possession game and general decision making to make it as effective as blocking did against some of the best teams in the world. And I don't think that's out of reach for a Mudrik. It's just about how well he adapts to the new environments he's put in and whether he can keep raising his game. Is it a good move for Arsenal? I think it brings a lot of disharmony, in my opinion, to that front line because I think Martinelli is someone who's worked so hard to establish his role out on the left. It is pretty ruthless to bring in a player who's possibly and probably going to be better than a Martinelli and that will affect and possibly stunt his development or it may force him to keep upping his game. It's very, very interesting to see how that pans out. But definitely, does it overall improve Arsenal even by like 5 or 10%? I think it does. And I think Mudrik is someone who's definitely going to terrorise a lot of defences. And if, in my opinion, I think Chelsea should have thrown the kitchen sink at a player like Mudrik because he would have been the ideal fit to give Havertz some legs to work with and a proper partner. And I think even if they were to keep Felix long term, I'd still throw the kitchen sink at Mudrik because I think he's the sort of player that that Chelsea front line needs. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, share and subscribe and see you guys again next time. Bye.